Vice President has cleared us to intercept tracks. You know what they have? Shoot them down if they do not respond. Those words do not lose their power, even with the passage of time. It is a fateful order that no one wants to give, but some may have to. It's not a day that I wake up that I don't feel the weight of responsibility, but we're, um, you know, we're, we're trained to deal with it. There's a lump in your throat when, when you're thinking, I mean, maybe what, I'm, what I've just said or what I've written or, or what I've provided might lead to something. What if I'm wrong? Up until 2001, the idea a hijacked commercial airliner could be turned into a flying bomb belonged to the realm of Tom Clancy fiction. 9-11 changed that. One of my officials put a note right in front of me, which is very unusual. It said, there's been a tragedy. So I wound up my speech, and then I heard the news that a plane had gone into one of the World Trade Towers in New York. And Immediately, my feeling was, well, that had to be an act of terrorism. During September 11th, it was up to David Colonnette as Minister of Transport to help clear the skies of other potential threats. And he had to steer jets away from population centers, landing transatlantic flights quickly along the East Coast. And we didn't have any information. We came to the conclusion that by landing in Toronto or Montreal that um, we were really courting a, a further risk. We have to get these planes down. I don't know where I'm scrambling these guys to. I need a direction, a destination. Region commander has declared that we can shoot down tracks that do not respond to our uh, direction. Okay. It was a chaotic situation on 9-11 as it would be today. And when it comes down to it, someone has to make the final fateful call. Shoot or don't shoot. From the moment of intercept to the time the order is given to pull the trigger, it is breathtakingly short. It would naturally involve the Chief of Defence Staff, the Prime Minister and possibly the RCMP Commissioner. All of it would depend on circumstances and who was available. John Manley was Deputy Prime Minister in the years following 9-11 and knows how that feels. Well, the burden is quite significant. Um, uh, my personal experience was that I had occasions when I had military personnel with me 24-7, including in my house while I was asleep, because they would need me as part of the chain of command. In order to make the call, you need good intelligence. It was important during 9-11, and even more so now. You're only as good as the accuracy of your own information. So, As a former CSIS analyst during 9-11, Phil Gursky knows that awful responsibility the scramble to piece together an incomplete, sometimes incomprehensible picture. Who is this? Why are they doing it? What's the target? I'm not going to say it's a crapshoot, because that's probably inaccurate, but it makes it a lot more difficult to, to give the best advice because you simply don't know. 9-11 forced those who are paid to think about nightmare scenarios to focus more sharply. The plan of how Canadian leaders would respond and the kind of resources at their disposal was obtained in its entirety by CBC News. We have committed to withholding many of those details for reasons of national security. However, what the documents do tell us is how opaque the terrorist threat has become. After 9-11, it was all about groups like Al-Qaeda commandeering a jet. That's where the planning and expectations were aimed. But as Canadians and the world have seen, there has been an evolution in terror. All the way back on the other side of the street, please, let's go. The lone wolves, like Michael Zihaf Bibo, represent an important new consideration for security planners. Some may be inspired by terror groups like the Islamic State and Al-Qaeda. Other terrorists may be more retro, or traditional hijackers with a grudge. In some respects, it would be back to the future. I have to say that having gone through it and looked back, um, you don't get a second chance to react. You, you, you just have to react. And you become very dispassionate, uh, very cool, somewhat might even say icy, because you could not get caught up with the emotions of the moment. We've got procedures that we practice uh, over and over and over again to make certain that we can uh, think as clearly as we can uh, in a crisis situation. I would say that air security incidents have a, a, a range to them. The most harmful, the potentially most harmful, are very low likelihood. Uh, 
uh, extremely low, but they're not zero. Murray Brewster, CBC News, Ottawa.